Welcome to another edition of Drawing with Jimmy Reyes. Today, I'm going to be talking about rendering. All right, let's get started. Okay, for this lesson, all you're going to need, simply three things. You are just going to need a pencil and an eraser. And in this case, I am using the kneaded rubber and I'm using a two millimeter HB lead with my lead holder. And below is a sheet of Bristol board and it is pre-lined in the measurements that comic books are drawn in. You don't have to have Bristol board. You can use a sheet of paper and or a blank sheet of Bristol board if you just want to be comfortable drawing on that particular surface. Um, whenever I draw, I draw on Bristol board just because I'm, I'm comfortable and I like to I, I like the feel and I'm, I'm used to drawing on bristle board okay so this video here is about rendering and rendering isn't a fundamental it isn't a beginning stage when learning to draw this video assumes that you already have a good strong foundation with anatomy perspectives proportions, and foreshortening. And there are several other stages prior to learning rendering. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that you already have the fundamentals down. And so rendering is used to add shading, can be used for mood, Different types of styles of rendering can be used for texture. They can also help shapes. Because drawing is simply shapes. No matter what you're drawing, it's always broken down into simple shapes. So let's go ahead and begin with some shapes. As you can see here, I have pre-drawn a circle. Now this circle without rendering looks flat. It's simply just a circle. Now if we want to turn this circle into a spear and give it the effect of or the illusion that this two-dimensional static image has depth, giving it a 3D look to it. Now how do we do that? What, where do I begin? Now this circle, and I know you were probably thinking, you know, hey, Jimmy, I'm not drawing circles. I'm, I'm drawing, you know, complex figures and I wanna draw, you know, my favorite comic book characters and dynamic poses. Well, it can be broken down to simple shapes. So let's go ahead and figure out where our light source is going to be on this particular image. Now let's say that right here on this particular circle, let's just say for beginning here purposes that the light source, now I'm, I'm drawing with a HB lead and I normally, I don't draw with an HB lead, but for the sake of the video, I wanted to draw on something just a little darker uh, and in case you're wondering what, which lead do I use, I use a 2H. 2H is a harder lead. And that allows me to draw, lightly draw in my roughs, my gesture drawings, get in my shapes as I am building up my drawing. So I do my, what's also referred to as underdrawing below and make sure that all my proportions are correct. Uh, make sure that I, you know, I sculpt the illustration and that I'm satisfied with it before I begin my rendering. So then I can then take my kneaded rubber with a lighter hard lid and I can soften up the pencil and then go in and keep the lines that I feel emphasize and help strengthen the illustration. So with this HB, lead here. I'm going to put this arrow down. This arrow is going to signify that the light is coming down this direction, which is up to the top right corner. 
and so that it is shining down. So light source is very important. So since the light is hitting here, and you can kind of think of this as a moon, and we'll say the sun is on this side. So then on this side of the illustration, we'll say that there's no light. And because we want to show it as a cylinder, my end comes to a point, but near the center, it's a little wider with my shadow or my shading. So let's do some shading all the way up to the end here. Okay. So now it's starting to look more like a cylinder. And what I want to do is in my imagination and in my mind's eye, I see the shape of this cylinder. In my mind's eye, it looks like it has curves and it's round like this. Okay, so it goes around like a like a Saturn ring. So, you know, just like the way you imagine a planet. So when I decide that I want to render and I want to render this shape with lines that are called bleed lines to help that shape, my lines need to go in that direction and following that curvature. So by keeping them uniformed, evenly spaced, it makes my rendering look neat. And as the curve starts to come down this way, the lines slowly start to bend upward. They start to go with the curvature right here. Okay. And I'm going to finish up here as well. And these start to curve inward just a little bit. Now, depending on exactly the type of shape that you want to have in there, you can either make these lines all curve with this little shape to it, right here in the center, or I can, depending on the amount of light that is hitting, I can also make it just curve kind of like the moon to help create that round shape. So you can also do this to it. You don't. And I like to keep my, my points at the end. I, I generally like to keep them all ending at the same length, but you could bring the center up just a little more, just if you want to indicate just a little more where the light is. But this is a perfectly round cylinder, so they're all going to be even. And these are feathered lines. They, they start with a wide base, and at the tip, they become thinner. Um, and it's referred to as a bleed, as if your black line just kind of bled on out and it thins. That's to create a gray shade. So we go from solid black to a gray shade to some bright white. Now the reason it's done this way for comic books is because comic books are often translated into ink. And with ink, you can't just lighten up on your pencil. See, with your, I'm sorry, with your inks. With my pencil, I can simply lighten up and create a gradient. But inkers can't do that. So since I'm not 
going to be printing, most comics aren't printed directly with pencils. Often they're colored on top of that. So unless you're specifically looking for that style, then you can render in that, in that way by simply lightening up on, your, on the weight of your pencil and creating that gradient. But comic books, and especially the way comic books were printed before, they it, it helped enhance uh, by creating by having the pencils interpreted into uh, solid black and white, and uh, helping the color the way they were colored back then to help create a contrast. Uh, today things are printed digitally. Um, they're not all done by uh, plates, but uh, so you can you can now do comic books like this and then simply have them colored on top and, and I've seen some great beautiful uh, printed artwork that way. Okay, so the standard way comic books are is this simple, simply rendering. Now it's your choice. You can cross hatch if you like um, and cross hatching simply is putting a set of hatch lines, some hatching like this and we create the same basic idea like this with simply with just straight lines. I made my lines thicker and closer together and they start slowly thinning out and gaining more white space in between. So they are spaced out as I get closer to where I want to say that the light is here and there's less light over here. So you have your first set of hatching. Then when you cross hatch it, you do the same exact thing, but you're crossing the lines with the same gradient that I placed in this direction. I am now placing them going up that way. So now there is less light within this area and there is a darker, less shadow, uh, I'm sorry, more shadow, less light. Okay, so we have this uh, particular shape and we've created it to look more like a spear. Okay, uh, our sphere, I'm sorry. Um, so we've got the, the spear there. Okay, so no matter what you're drawing, if you're drawing a leg, you're drawing a hand, um, they're all going to be Basically, this is an ellipse, and I took two ellipse circles and then I connected them together. Um, so let's think of this, even though this is a, a forearm, and forearms aren't going to be a f even flat um, shape like this. They're going to they're going to be layered, and we'll get to that just in a minute. But let's say the same thing that our light source is coming from up here. And anything down this side is not receiving light. Okay, so let's say that right here, that anything that is not directly in view of the light here, all the stuff away from the light. Okay, I'm gonna try to darken up my pencil there for the camera. Okay, so let's say that our light is here and this is all in light and in darkness. And this side has shadow because of that. Now what we did here is we created these bleeds to help the eye flow in the direction of the shape. We helped identify the, the shape here. So we won't do the same thing here. So this is gonna be used later in a, a leg, a hand, a chest muscle, you know, uh, many other things. Because drawings, as I mentioned before, and I really wanna emphasize this, is that any drawing, no matter what you're drawing, can be broken down into basic shapes. So always keep that in mind. And light source. Shape and light source. So the ellipse goes around along the surface. I want to follow that line. 
And depending on how wide you make this base and how close together, that's going to also determine how quick your gradient goes from light into shadow into the shade. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep these all within the shape and curve of our ellipsed rectangle here, our, our ellipsed um, shape here that that we have. Okay, so following that. Okay. Just to help the eye, I will fill in just a little more of the black that's right there. So now we can see that this is not a flat surface. It is curved. It's an ellipse. And we've identified the light source. We can now see that the light is over here. Now if you wanted to, to help some of the shape under here with smaller, thinner lines, just coming out of the shadow that is underneath, but still following the shape of the ellipse surface. So we have just a little bit of shadow underneath there. Now when you're drawing an arm and you're drawing the shoulder or you're drawing the forearm, I want you to think of it as shapes in layers. This is simply the same as this, but they are placed on top of each other. And as you can see, I went ahead and I placed these dotted, line, dotted lines below just to kind of show that the shape would go through. If you could see through this, you could see the shape underneath. And these are kind of like these um, shapes all piled on top of each other. But the surface of them all have that ellipse curved top. So the same thing that we did here, we're going to do here. And the arrow simply identifies my light source. So in your mind's eye, you have this arrow. But when you're beginning, if you like, you can make a notation and put a really light arrow that you can later erase. Just to always reference back to make sure that you have your light source and that you're conscious and aware of your light source. But you will you can also, when you, you get to a point where it's in your mind's eye and you're always aware of where the light source is. Okay, so lights up here light here, light here, and the same thing with that we will do with what we did up top we will do here. But because this is on top of this shape and our light is up here, well we're going to start getting some shadow and it is going to be cast from the shape that's on top. And it is cast. Onto this one. And even though the light source is hitting directly right over and this side and this side, because they both curve and they concave in, we're going to darken this just a little bit just to help show a concave right there okay now we can shade all of this in because we can identify or make it uh, easy to identify that there is no light there we want our viewer to be aware that there is no light hitting on any of these here because they are away from the light source. Okay, and down here, so if the light source is here 
and just a little bit of light, maybe it's peaking right over here. We can even just leave a hint of light up top there. And we can just shade all this back in here if we wanted to. But since I'm saying that there's no light hitting any of this, I'm going to shade it all in. And the same rule, what we did up here, we want to do that right here. This one has that smaller base to help the ellipse surface here. I want to stay within that shape. But notice that I am not extending those lines too far. That's because I want to keep this shadow into the concave less than I want to do on this concave right here because there is actually more light hitting that surface than there is hitting on this side. So we are going to draw a bunch of these bleeds coming out here. Okay. And because there is less light all the way over here because our light source is on the right. I'll turn this back so we can see it at the um, level here instead of it flipped sideways. Light source is up on the right. So over here there is no light. But to help the shape, I want to use bleeds and do what I did here. I want to do those here. And I am going to make these closer together and to go all the way over because there is less light on this end than there is on anything on this side. But I don't want to shade it in completely in black. And we can. We can shade them in black. This lighter line there just to kind of help some of the, the gradient there. And even if we wanted to, let's say we want to make sure that there is a bit of shadow right there. And we can start that line with bleeds going in the opposite direction, but not too far over because right here is, is light. Okay, so we have right over here, and sometimes I want to make it even there, just like that. Okay, so now we're showing that the shape is curved, and they are layered. And this is how I want you to think of a forearm or leg whenever you're drawing a person, um, because uh, comic books, 90% of the time what you're drawing, you're drawing people. Um, and often in comic books, people are wearing skin tight clothes, or we, we often show exaggerated muscle. And this is the way to, that I want you to always keep in mind on how to break it down and, and render it. When you're drawing and you're rendering, your mind's eye should see it in this as simple, as simplistic as this illustration. Now, when you do rendering on something that is not curved, around and we have this cube right here okay and we want to do the same type of shadow and rendering on this so let's just say that the light is doing the same thing and the ends are black so we're gonna take our pencil fill this in all black now, the surfaces on a cube like this are flat. They are not curved. They're flat. So what we want to do is keep in mind 
the shape and not just light source. So two things to keep in mind, light source and shape. So how are we going to indicate over here that there is less light? Well, now we're going to do the same thing that we did. I put my solid line here for the base and then I do straight lines for the bleed. The lines feather, they're thinner up here and they gradually start getting thicker and thicker until that triangular wide base in the end. So that bleed feathers out. Light hitting directly on this end, completely in white. The light is just touching halfway on top and it begins to become in shadow. So these lines going straight, that indicates it's a flat surface and that it is uh, not curved. Okay, so earlier I spoke of a leg. And I mentioned that the leg, I'm going to take my pencil and sharpen it. And I apologize for hitting the camera there, but <laughs> keep the camera low on the table. I want you to be able to see what is placed down on this paper. So I am working on this little, uh, like I'm churning butter right here. I don't know if you guys know what that is. <laughs> All right. Not that we churn a lot of butter here in Texas, but uh, that's what it reminds me of. Okay. So here is my sharp point. This is something that uh, I want you to keep in mind when you are doing when you're drawing keep your points sharp uh, when you are doing your fine line work um, I like to have my pencil kind of dull when I when I do my first under drawing or gesture drawings but let's say there is a human leg right here and that the leg is a muscular leg so with the same idea and theory same rules is what I meant to say here that we applied to these shapes we are going to apply to the leg that uh, I have drawn now, right now just kind of darkening that in so that we can Get that on camera. I want to make sure that you can see everything that is placed down onto the Bristol paper. Okay. I like to draw in little shapes and lines before I start rendering because these little curved lines that I do kind of like a um, kind of helps me see later when I, I start rendering it's kind of like a um, like a notation or um, a test line I guess I should say okay so we've got a, a human leg this is gonna be the thigh this would then connect to say he had on these underoos or something this would be a you know or he's wearing some speedos or something Okay, so that's what that would be there. And this would be his right leg. This is a thigh, this is a knee, and it starts to become his shin, his calf. All right, so the same, um, the same rules that we followed for this, that there's curves. We wanna do the same thing for leg. Let's say this time, the light source is coming from that side. So what I'm going to do is I want to show this ellipse shape for the thigh, but because muscles are placed on top of each other like this, that the line curves. There's this kind of ellipse shape here with another one placed on top. So to indicate that there's a curve and the light's hitting there, I placed shading and shadow there. 
because this is also the ellipse shape with no light hidden there. And I'm going to do the same thing here onto the end because this is the end like we did here, the front of it. And that's showing the muscle that is raised. But because it's not raised as far, it has a smaller front here. And this is the same thing with the muscle and the shape that is below. And here's another one. It extends there out just a little further. Now, kneecaps, for me, whenever I draw them, but uh, I'll do a video later for... I like to do my kneecaps with two circles um, and having one smaller on the bottom. So I'm going to say that... This would all be in shadow. And this here is where the shin muscle comes in, the bottom of the knee. And then there are a few other little shapes in there that I'm going to go ahead and enhance them by using the bleeds because that's that's my particular style of rendering. With this HB lead here, um, I like the harder lead because I can get a much more finer point um, with it. This HB lead is much softer and it also smears easier on the surface. And because you will be dragging your hand across the paper quite often, um, you can smear the softer lid much easier. And the harder lid is much more difficult to smear. Okay, so let me get my... I have to pull this uh, foam grip back in order for this to fit into my sharpener. And I'm sliding it back where now it's comfortable. So you could leave the illustration like this. It's, it's starting to show the shape and everything, but I want to help it like I did here. So out of the black and out of the darkness. Okay, so here is the bleeds following the shape of the leg. Space them out just a little further. To help indicate the light, it becomes a gradient and it gradually starts to reach the area of light there. And because we want to follow the shape, and these lines are thicker and closer together, kind of like when we I was showing that cross hatching closer together like that now this right here is part of that entire muscle curving just to help to show the, the surfaces and the layers following the shape of this muscle. I am curving these lines. Okay, so now it's starting to look more like a muscular leg. You're starting to see more shape. And this one right here is basically like this one right here because this light source is on the opposite over here. It's basically this in reverse. So basic shapes can all be broken down to basic shapes. The 
So we have the line curved. And then you could do things like cross hatching. You can then cross the line just to help the gradient and that helps collect the lines down below and the shadows. So now you can start to see the shapes. I'm sorry here, I'm opening up my soda. <laughs> it's allergy season here in Texas. So I'm sorry that I'm doing that here in the video, but I get thirsty out here. Okay, so now to come down and draw where the knee is. Now the knee is much more flat. The knee is a lot more like this particular uh, cube that we drew. So the lines on the knee aren't going to be um, curved very much because that it is more of a flat kind of surface. So we're indicating it's not as curved by the way that we bend our line. And it's doing the same thing. It's bleeding out of the dark and it's going up into the light. This end here, this is curved, but not as much. So it is following the shape. And then we want to help bring the calf muscle out. Okay, now the calf muscle is curved into this direction. So we want to keep our lines curved. And the lines on the back end of the leg away from the light source, which if you remember, our light source is up top left corner. So the lines underneath here are thicker because this is not a straight line. This shape is not straight, just like what we did here on the ends, how we darken where it curves away from the light. So if you see my fingers, my light source is up top and underneath is shadow. So we can start doing that right here and keep this thicker and that thinner because the light is hitting that. And we'll do the same thing. It's really not as thick right there or as thin, but the light would be hitting the top of that. And as it is coming underneath that curve, this would be where the light is hitting. Underneath, that line's thicker. So even just your weight lines that are that are around the body, uh, that even helps add, um, helps the, the shapes and the shading when, uh, when you're rendering. So as you can see here, there is a, a leg and um, you don't wanna, you don't ever want to over render your illustration and that means putting in so many lines that, that are unnecessary uh, you just need the, the basic lines that help shape, that help to show that your figure is not flat, that he has curves, he has um, layers to him, to at least to his anatomy. So we've got that leg. Now let's say that we have a, a human figure and our human figure um, and this is just going to be the torso and the side view of his arm. And let's say, you know, we want to do the exact same thing. We want to render this. Now, same, same exact rules apply that we did with all our shapes. We are going to do with his shoulder. 
And if you've taken anatomy and you know that the shoulder has um, different shapes, different uh, layers, just like this, of muscle. Um, and if you're a guy um, and you, uh, you know, pay attention to your own anatomy, you know, uh, you know, don't, don't close your eyes when you're, you know, getting dressed in front of the mirror, you know, just, you know, be conscious, you know, take a look and just go, hey, you know, this is how my shoulder bends, you know, and um, I guess shoulders have always been kind of easier for me because I have a lot of definition, definition in my shoulders, but um, so we're going to go ahead and, and, and start this particular um, illustration and we did the light source on the left and all the shading was on the right let's just say the light source is coming in front of it's in front of this figure so let's just say the the lights in front of them and it's gonna it's gonna be hitting this figure um, now the way that I get my detail and the way that I, I, I do all that detail that you uh, if you saw the beginning of this video that was featured there in the beginning with those illustrations is that I use a very very fine point one thing you, you have to remember is that your illustration your comic book illustration is going to be reduced down most of the time the illustration um, is reduced down at about 67 percent if your image area is 10 by 15 and you're on 11 by 17 paper So you, uh, you get about 6-7% uh, reduction. So if you put in a lot of detail and it's reduced, you have to be conscious of your lines and that amount of detail. It's going to close in. Uh, sometimes you can lose some of that detail. Sometimes it'll look a bit muddy. And uh, especially if you over-render, things look a bit messy. And remember that you're on a deadline. Things are due at a certain time. Um, so you uh, don't need to spend time on all this unnecessary detail. Okay, so light source is up front and we start to have the shape here. I pencil in, if you can see, when I pencil, I pencil in these little bitty lines when I draw. You know, it's it's loose, but I I pencil in and I I add in these uh, all these different lines and shapes and they they the, the underdrawing helps my eye when I am going in and doing the rendering and I like to see a lot of that with whenever I'm inking a page I like to be able to see all the shapes and things where people where the penciler was building up their illustration this way I I can help enhance it. Uh, I can help when enhancing whenever I'm inking and help with the shapes and the curves with the rendering, stuff like that. Yeah, even when inking, I keep rendering uh, in the back of my mind. I, I um, light source and things like that. I, I try to stay conscious of that as I can. Okay, so I'm shading this in with the light source in mind. It's, it's there, it's in, the light source is in my mind's eye. And in my brain, I'm imagining the shapes and the shadow, where it will hit in those shapes, where the light source isn't touching those shapes and a lot of times to be honest I almost see the image on the paper and the drawing starts to draw itself and my hand is just a printer and it just uh, just like it's printing out the image And that is by working out your imagination. 
your imagination, your brain is a muscle and your imagination can be built the more you work it out. It's just like the way this figure was able to go to the gym probably every single day for God, the, the moment he hit puberty. He's probably been in the gym every day to have the muscles look like this. And he's probably never had carbs in his life. I like to be active. I like to try to stay in shape. But uh, I enjoy food too. I enjoy cookies. So, uh, and candies and stuff like that. And though I, I shouldn't, I should enjoy cookies and candies. I mean, for one, it's, it's not healthy, but for two, I am a diabetic. So uh, I should not be eating cookies and candies ever. But who can say no? donuts and stuff like that so what I'm doing right now is I am simply just putting in where there is absolutely no light there is no light at all on this particular part of the shape this is where I have said there would be in my mind my mind's eye is telling me there's absolutely no light on that end so it's completely in shadow so that's what uh, I'm working on right now. And I like to, when I'm drawing, I, I draw with, loose with the, um, the harder 2H lead. Um, this is the 2H lead, in case you're wondering. And my pencil's not as sharp in it, with it. Um, and I, I kind of like just loosely just kind of like throw in some some shapes there, you know um, I just kind of do that and, and it's super light so couldn't use my pencil that that I'm comfortable drawing with Because of the camera wouldn't pick it up um, But you know I mean even though this is a different grade lead um, and I am drawing in a different seated position than I normally would draw because uh, I don't want my big head blocking the camera so I am drawing in a different comfortable but still still able to get the the basic you know uh, the basics on here it's it's generally okay so this is just a little of the rendering. I will finish the uh, the rest of the figure here, but just to kind of get started with uh, some of the example um, with uh, the basic shapes when we are doing this uh, particular uh, figure. And there, there's more. There's more shading. There's there's more to it, and and uh, I will start uh, bringing that out um, and start doing that. But I just kind of want to show the shape that's up on this shoulder. And remember, it is the same rules as what we, we did here. And just think of it in basic shapes. And that is what is up here on his shoulder. Um, so when I do the feathering, I want to follow that curve. That line so my feathering looks just like my fingers like spaced and showing that curve in the direction that my my fingers not not any shadow on my fingers but the, the bleeds were basically going in that particular particular shape it almost looks like a little set of fingers as I near the base of the shape underneath on this side where the light isn't hitting down over here. My lines get closer together and they get thicker. And that helps create that gradient where these lines start to create that gradient. And 
always remember and keep in mind you're drawing figures that are not flat though you're drawing onto a flat two-dimensional surface but um, you want to create the illusion that there is depth and there is weight onto these characters, these figures. More of these bleed lines that follow the shape of this particular cylinder right here. Follow that. Although when you're drawing, you don't want to draw everything straight through. You want to kind of help it with your rendering. But that's what my mind eye sees is that shape right on there. So the reason these line, the lines that are right here are shorter is because that particular little round shape is not, our, our ellipse shape there is not as large as this one. So the lines go out further on that one. Now I'd recommend when you want to learn how to render comic books, you can learn from your favorite artist how to do rendering. Get to see how they've translated illustrations into the art style of comic books. And you don't have to necessarily, but I'd recommend taking a look at John Buscema's work. I uh, mean, not only does that guy have a good understanding of anatomy and, and, and storytelling because this is a storytelling medium. That's, that's what we're doing. Not only does he have that, he has a very good understanding of, of shading and rendering and not over-rendering your particular uh, illustrations. Just placing down the, the information there's enough information that allows the eye of your viewer to create the rest, but yet he still does it in such an interesting way. But you just can't help and just stare at his artwork. And and again, I mean, just you know, take a look at your favorite artist. Another artist who reminds me of of Buscema. Um, is Mark Silvestri. Uh, Mark Silvestri's work on that he did back in, I want to say it was the late 80s, maybe 1990, um, that he did on Wolverine. I, I love his work on that, on that run that he did. Um, that's, that's the work that just, I, I hope to I want to work to and, and, and achieve that, get as close as I can to that level. I mean, the, the guy is, uh, is amazing, and I, I, I don't know if I'll ever reach that, that type of level, but I'm going to attempt to. And another artist whose work that, that this is just who I enjoy, uh, Rudy Nebra. Um, Filipino artist from the 70s and the 80s. Uh, he also worked uh, with Buscema. He, um, Rudy Nebra is both a penciler and an inker. And wow, I that's what I want to do. I want to uh, be able to do both. There was a guy back in the 90s, um, his name is Richard Bennett, and uh, I believe he's in a advertising or he's in a different industry now, but his rendering style, I, I really enjoyed the way he rendered so many different textures. That inspired me so much that uh, it, it it broke what 
the style was back in the 90s. It broke out of that, um, you know, it's out of that box and it just brought new, new things. And it was funny because um, I was taught to do those textures um, when I was uh, in school. I never took any art classes in school. Um, I didn't start drawing until I was about 19 years old. So yeah, I was this 19-year-old uh, senior. <laughs> and then most of you guys probably graduated at 18 or 17. School was always more challenging for me. Which, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm much more um, right side, right hemisphere. I'm much more dominant, dominant that way. But my daughter who you saw on the, um, one of my videos, back when she was, that's when she was young, younger, you know, it's when she was a little girl, or uh, a very young teenager, um, and now she's a young adult. That young girl, and, and I'm not just saying this because I'm her father, and, and, and of course I'm, uh, I'm extremely proud of her, um, but, uh, you, you just can't help and deny that she is incredibly smart. She got a scholarship and is going to a university and she graduated uh, magnum cum laude and she is just, uh, just, just, just God, just so, so good, you know, with, uh, and amazing with, with, when, with her learning in, in school and, and just, uh, maintaining that, that perfect grade average and it's just wow she's uh, an amazing thing about my daughter um, and uh, I have a son as well and and uh, I'm, I'm equally as proud of both of them I, I, I love them both dearly um, but just for you know just mention here my, my daughter she, you know she she none of my kids either my, my son or my daughter expressed any interest in drawing and I always had art jobs I was always in either graphic design web design um, I did storyboards for a very long time for an advertising company and um, neither of my kids you know watching me draw almost every day um, not comic books but uh, in a different uh, field and watching me you know do my storyboards that's mostly the type of drawing that I did uh, the others were as I mentioned graphic design and, and web design but um, they had they didn't express an interest at all in drawing so I had no idea you know I always wanted my, my one of my kids to draw and I had no idea that my daughter can draw she was watching me one day and I'm sitting here sketching on a on my desk and she sat down and drew the Hulk. She, she saw this um, image that I had uh, of the Incredible Hulk and I, I think it was uh, an image uh, drawn by a, a friend of mine and uh, she just sat down and drew it. And, I'm not saying this because she's my daughter. She did a better job <laughs> than my friend did. Um, and it was just, or it was a, I, I was working in a studio and it was like a studio mate back then. But, um, but I, I'll say, yeah, we were friends. But she just uh, really did a great job. So I, I kept it. Um, I don't have it with me right now. Unfortunately, I, I ended up storing it away when I moved, but uh, I went, oh my God, you know, this is, this is so amazing. And now that I'm, I'm so aware now of, of exactly how smart she is, you know, with, with the, uh, with her graduation and then going off to a university and, and that she has both sides of her brain, just, you know, just so developed. And, uh, I just thought, wow. I wish that I, I, I had that. Um, so I, I, I struggled through school. So in school, 
Um, I, I was in high school, I was always drawing a lot, drawing in my classes and stuff. So they said, hey, you know what? It's, you know, it's your senior year. You know, you're, you're, you, you seem to be losing focus. Uh, let's try to gain, gain some, put that, you know, let's try to gain some interest back. Um, let's place, place you in to one of these, um, they, they didn't have an art class, but they had an advertising class. And so let's place you in this advertising class. Maybe that will help get your interest back into school. So as a senior at age 19, that's when I started to draw. That was when I, I, I had always had the ability, but it was, um, it had never been um, developed. So I started to, um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm sharing all these <laughs> as, I'm, uh, as I'm drawing because it, it, uh, I don't want to just be quiet here and just draw on the page. So... <laughs> So if you don't like my voice or my story, you can just, you can put me on mute. It won't, it won't offend me. Um, and just watch the illustration. But, uh, so yeah, I, I started drawing, um, and, uh, and the, and the advertising. And one of the things, uh, there that, uh, I was taught, uh, was stippling, um, illustration. That goes back to what I mentioned about Richard Bennett. Richard Bennett seemed to bring in a lot of textures and styles that we were using in commercial art, in illustrations, and, and comic books is, is commercial art, but um, it wasn't comic book style. It was like he, he was influenced outside of comic books. And uh, and then he had a lot of Neil Adams in there too, um, having worked at Continuity uh, Studio with uh, Neil Adams. And uh, so he was uh, bringing in these textures, and and that has always influenced me. So whenever I draw some things, uh, certain things, I I am influenced by that, and so I kind of follow his um, his approach. I have a very similar approach, but but no one's ever exactly the same, and. We um, kind of take it and mix it in with with our own, and uh, so now I have a granddaughter, my my son, who I, I mentioned. I have a son; he's older than than his sister, and uh, and I have a granddaughter. And hey, my granddaughter likes to draw. I was so excited. I was just it's like, whoa, finally. I love my kids. I love them a lot, but uh, <laughs> oh, it's nice that uh, while I'm still here on Earth, I, I've I've got a part of me here that that is uh, the next generation who who uh, likes to draw. So she's she's little. She's she's four years old right now, um, and uh, she's she's doing some amazing artwork and stuff, and and I really like it. Um, she, she you know of course being little, she really likes to work with color a lot. I want to encourage that. So I think too that is kind of why maybe I'm testing out on you guys here and testing how to do tutorials and how to teach. <laughs> so that way uh, I uh, work out the kinks before teaching my granddaughter. All right, so I've I've illustrated, uh, I've done a little bit of rendering on here. I'm I'm going to do just a, a little bit more uh, on here now. What I what I've done here, and I, I'm going to go back and and uh, start with the the shoulder, as I mentioned before, shapes. So the lines bend to follow the shape, and this is the curve of the shape. And keeping in mind light source, so the light is coming down hitting on top and everything on the left lower side isn't receiving light the reason the right side of this side is in shadow is because that is where the concave meets and it gets darker within the concave there's light up here 
and then there's some shade and concave here more light so that's why this little area starts to to get that because it is away from the light source there now the the lines that are on his on his chest um go and i hope you guys don't mind if there's some kids or people you know younger viewers on here watching that i'm it's part of the male anatomy um so i'm drawing where you can see on there that is the nipple on the chest here um, I'm not going to emphasize that too much, but um, so I'm on his chest here, and this is just to show where his chest is. Uh, the shape is showing that curve that is going up, and so my lines went up, and they're curving to the left. So I did that there, and then it continues with those bleeds right here and when I do the bleeds I, I try to as best that I can to um, show keep them uniformed and a bit of a pattern so that um, they look a little neater the rendering doesn't look so messy and you don't necessarily always have to draw the lines all the way through because light uh, you know, just kind of hitting and just kind of break it up there just a little bit. You don't have to draw the shadow all the way through. So we're starting to see his anatomy, his shape is, is slowly starting, uh, starting to come in. Uh, what is right here on the bicep, this is what I referred to earlier as cross hatching and you, we saw just a little bit right there I cross hatched near the bottom that kind of helps create more of a, a gray tone rather than um, just uh, white to black that kind of helps the transition from white to black to transition much more uh, slowly more uh, gradual um, it's not as sharp so there's a, a bit more there. And you can do different things if you wanted to. Say, uh, a lot of people will draw in some veins. And they always just shade in the negative space. Uh, negative just being where the light isn't hitting. Just to kind of add in some of the veins. You know, if you really just wanted to do that. And I also have this little eraser here. And if you've seen this, uh, if you've seen my video where I have uh, showing my, a bit of my studio uh, tour, but I do the, it's called Art Supplies for Inkers. In there, I, I show that eraser. And that eraser, uh, I really enjoy it because it allows me to, to go in and break up um, some of the white, with, you know, like add in, say I wanted to, put in a line just a little further back and because it is a plastic eraser it removes all the pencil line just a little more and if I just wanted to get a peek more of say light is just hitting that that weird shape there and so on your human neck um, has a lot of these little uh, vein and tendons. Um, so uh, depending on how, if you were to kind of bite down your, your bottom teeth, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of like a, like a grimace, really just, uh, you know, and you're, kind of tensing up those shoulders then that those muscles come out a lot more and even though this isn't a video about anatomy it's just when you're rendering just kind of rendering in some of those extra lines like I mentioned here with the vein the negative space 
So you don't have to draw those lines all the way through. You just kind of shade in where the light is, in, uh, is not hitting. And um, it starts to kind of create this like uh, kind of, you know, where the, uh, the veins or these, I'm not sure if they're tendons or anything. I'm not a complete expert on anatomy, but you just, uh, you have to have uh, at least a good understanding. It's not a medical book that you're drawing. You're drawing exaggerated characters, but you just have to have a good foundation the way it looks in reality before you exaggerate it. So I'm starting to create this shadow right here, and it, I'm doing so to kind of help the shape of his uh, tricep. Um, and I'm sorry, not his tricep, his, um, I'm drawing a blank here for a second here, but, um, trap, is it a trapezoid, I want to say, but, uh, I am starting to make the shadow so that I can do these bleeds following the shape of that muscle. Okay, so light source, top right. Anything behind this guy, it's pretty thick line. Because there's really no light touching that end. Kind of like what we did at the end of the leg here. Okay, thicker. Thicker lines where the light is not touching. And there's always less over here on this end. Although uh, there is what is called a secondary light source say because really uh, in, in reality when your places are multiple light sources almost all the time um, you're not just completely casting one particular light source but when you're rendering like this you really want to kind of think of it as uh, one light source but the, the secondary light source and just to kind of help along the end I kind of did this little like halo kind of white or it's all solid white there's there's really no uh, bleeds or any feathering or anything or hatching or anything just right along there just the light just kind of like a, a secondary light coming through so we are going to continue with the shape on this chest muscle here Let's do more because this is really where the same similar shape that is on those ellipse um, little cylinder things that I've, I've got over here. Um, so this is more of what I was showing that example. So I'll work on this here making sure we get this This would be the forearm. And this is all away from 
that uh, light source with a bit of like a secondary lighting underneath there. So. So we're starting to see shapes. We're starting to define the muscles. And uh, you can now start to see that it is not a flat figure. Nothing on him is flat. There are many layers of shapes, but all broken down to this simple basic formula shape on top of each other, layered. All right, so his forearm right over here is basically the exact same thing, sort of like this little cylinder thing that I did. It was on top of that cylinder, uh, on top of that one um, is the same thing there. There's this is shaped and it is on top so I want to follow the curve. Now, I, for the sake of the example, I drew a little line there to kind of just show the shape, but I don't want that line to go all the way through. I want to follow it with some of these bleeds. So now we have the bleeds showing that shape a little more. A little bit of negative space right here rendered in. Maybe there's a dip between the two. You know, in your forearm when you make flex that muscle. Um, so maybe we have that there, and I I added that little concave in there, but just the negative area, not eh, kind of help. Show that there's more, that there's more shape, more layers to that. Just kind of creating these little bleeds to just short and they just start to peek out there because that particular shape isn't as wide as it is up here it's, kind of, it's a smaller so the lines are shorter so now we can start to see even though we can start to see the, the, the layers and the shapes, even though the light source is in the front, but our figure is not, that's right, not flat. So there's still some thicker lines here that the light is still not touching because it is underneath these curves, these shapes that he, that he has. So in my head, and in my mind's eye, I see this as just two round kind of shapes, and then it, this is kind of almost the, the curve side of it. I uh, don't want to say flat side of it, but it's more of like the uh, bottom piece that we did on the uh, 
onto the cylinders that we did earlier, these little, I don't know, they're like a little pieces of sausages or something, but and right here, these are just the negative rendering right there. I'm just shading in just a little bit of where that little pocket just of under the muscle there and left this open. So you didn't necessarily have to shade it all completely in. And this isn't um, focused on anatomy, but you, you want to make sure, I mean, this is really just to focus on the rendering, but you always want to make sure, you know, that you, your proportions and things are as close to reality. Because the human eye, even though your reader is not a um, an artist themselves. You know they may or may not be, but if they're not, they're still going to identify that something is wrong or off on the illustration, and that's because we see humans, people every day in our lives. So even though they won't know why it looks off or wrong. But um, you know, it's just not being an artist, they want to understand the technical, but they will recognize that something is off. So that's the reason why you want to base it in some form of reality. Um, and of course, we, we make it exciting with... Uh, so a, a person may not necessarily have all these these little lines and, and pieces in the neck, but um, we just simply do that uh, for several reasons, um, style, um, just to make it a little interesting. So, I hope that you have a paper and a pencil and are at least trying to do a few of these sketches and uh, you don't have to be following along and, and drawing it right now this the reason for the video is that you can always reference back and it'll be online for hopefully for a very long time so that for that reason that you can reference back but if you are um, practicing along here, what are the key things that you want to keep in mind when you're rendering? Your shapes of your figure or shape of whatever it is that you're drawing and your light source. And these bleeds pretty much um, is my art style. The reason that I, I chose to keep this for the video is that it, it, it seems to be um, a much easier way to, to render because you keep in mind those those shapes and um, it is uh, very effective. Um, I can see why um, guys like Buscema and uh, David Finch, um, Mark Silvestri, um, when he was drawing in that style, um, I can see why they, they use it because definitely very effective.
just coming out of these blades and I've added. So this is our figure. Um, and he, uh, it's the right shoulder, bicep, his triceps in there, his elbow down to his forearm. Uh, we've got his chest. Um, we have his rib cage showing up on top. Your rib cage actually, um, most, most people, uh, most male anatomy, you, you underneath the chest, uh, over the rib cage on the top rib cage plate, you, you start to see the beginning of the, uh, abdominal muscles, depending on how defined you, uh, you have your muscles. And so you will start to see the six pack, but I, I sort of just kind of showed that top plate kind of like, uh, the um, muscles and then really underneath the rib cage, you know, um, where the rib cage goes back up like that, you know, it's just kind of rib cage. And then just to help the shape right here, we don't have to put in every It was bugging me on the uh, illustration. Um, based on your deadline, that's when you've got to learn when to cut the cord, you know, based on how much time that you have for your illustration, what your deadline is. That always dictate, dictates uh, how much of a finished um, illustration and rendering, how much you know time you have. But uh, as you can see here, this this is pretty much it. There, I mean, I, I, you don't really want to over render. Um, I keep these kind of open. This is like uh, a secondary lighting underneath that flat area, just to help break up that black in there, and to help the shape of his anatomy, because he has multiple layers of shapes. All right, so we've rendered a leg uh, using this exact same rules and, and, and approach uh, to this basic shapes. They're all applied onto a more complex uh, layer of shapes uh, and different levels. Um, and it was on the thigh muscle uh, we've done um, a torso with a arm on the right side of the figure. Now, how do we render faces? Um, and how do we uh, cast uh, shadows? And uh, how do we put the shading in there? And it's the same exact, though it looks different and it may seem a little more intimidating, but it's really the same basic rules that we just did on, on the uh, with the shapes, the basic spear, um, sorry, sphere. I don't know why I want to keep saying spear, um, but I, I make these videos late late at night after my, my work's been done, so uh, I'm a little more uh, <laughs> just a, a little more tired, I guess my 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 mouth is, uh, my lips. Um, so we've got the sphere, we've got this ellipse shape, and the cube that's down here so it's the same exact thing just just the uh, same basic rules okay so we've got a human head and we're gonna say the human head uh, light source is coming from let's say it was like this guy up here and this is his head and our light source is coming from the front of him so we are going to start rendering. And this is with your basic um, underdrawing and gesture drawing already uh, completed. Because the rendering is at the end. Um, it's, it's really 
just to help enhance your illustration. It's it's just to um, help create the illusion of weight and depth. And um, it's a bit of style, um, depending on how you want to render. It is also to uh, add texture, the shadows, and your shading creates, can create mood. You can set tone for your viewer. So when I'm adding in all the shadow, um, my, my brain tells my hand, hey, keep in mind the shape where the light is not hitting that shape. So that's what we're doing is we are adding in multiple layers of muscle uh, multiple layers that he has of um, you know I want to say like uh, well like cartilage and just bone and the shape of the skull and um, you know everything that that goes into your face your face All right. I don't know that just made me just sounded funny to me um, so you draw everything that is, um, I'm sorry, I don't mean draw, I mean you shade in everything that is away from the light when you are drawing this, uh, drawing a human uh, head or drawing anything. light source coming up that way so the line on that side of his um, what is this like a clef or something and this side of it kind of like a horseshoe shape this side the lights on the right so on this side of it would be where the first dip goes in it's a little thicker this side up here starts to be the top surface of it, so it's just one line. There isn't necessarily a thicker line on that side because that's just where the, the beginning, the, the, it reaches the surface part of your top lip or the beginning of your, your top lip. I don't usually like to, when I draw lips or mouth, I don't really like them to be completely closed. I, I think because I talk a lot. Um, and I think that's why I was able to jump right in with these videos because uh, I talk a lot. It wasn't hard. is isn't hard for me to. But I think because the mouth is always moving, at least mine is, even if you're just breathing, maybe he, you know, I don't really know anyone who really just sits there with their mouth completely closed all the time. So I generally just add that um, opening there because just the illusion of movement on this um, static image. And I think by helping create little things like that, like little movement and stuff, uh, it helps improve your, your it helps aid your, your storytelling or enhance it, you know. So I'm shading the underside of that jaw because a jaw isn't completely a flat surface 
even it has its multiple layers and that's exactly what I am doing I am shading underneath this video is going to be um, longer it's a lot longer than um, cause it's much more in depth this is an actual sit down and actually show how I do it where I broke up the uh, video of the inking video but I, I think I want to keep this one together because uh, I don't want people to uh, I think some people will check out the first video and then they may or may not um, come back right away and watch the rest of it they, and that's one of the, I mean it, that can be a good thing too is that you gives you the option of bookmarking coming back you know you finish part one and you come back I mean the video that I placed up there with my inking they all have the same basic amount of views so I mean people are uh, watching the next one but this one I was thinking I will try that out since uh, I mentioned before I am making videos for the first time so I'm learning how to uh, make this how-to video because that's that's what this is. This is a how-to video. So I am even with this these little lines that are up on the forehead. This is when your forehead, uh, when you're moving the top of your forehead, you're lifting your brow or you're lifting the muscle that's up on your on your forehead. So those lines are the, are the concave inside. And that's why, and I always tend to draw these big eyebrows because I, I think it helps enhance uh, the illustration. I think that it um, helps bring attention to the eyeballs. And that's kind of something that I, I like he doesn't have eyeballs yet but I I will make sure that I place eyeballs in there because uh, to me that's that's an important part the eye the human eye that also helps create mood and, and things like that now what I'm doing up here is I, I'm giving this guy a mohawk um, mohawk mullet maybe somewhat of a uh, not really a full hawk but the same rules apply with shape so I am, I am rendering and shading in, keeping my source light in mind. And even these lines not only indicate the multiple strands of hair, each individual strand or multiple strands, um, I am also trying to keep the shape of it. There is multiple layers. And I want my viewer to be able to follow that shape with their eyes uh, just simply when they quickly look at the illustration be able to identify ah, his mohawk is shaped in that direction and this is what this is the way that it goes curve even though I am not drawing every single hair strand you can um, easily just place the basic shapes in there and let your viewer's eye do the rest. It'll tell the human mind will then analyze the information provided and will say, hey, that's, that is hair. And it saves you the time from trying to draw every single hair strand because that is time consuming and comic books generally done within four weeks and that's 22 pages sometimes more but generally the 22 page comic books are the ones that are done within a month and I'm sorry that I went off camera there um, I am trying to be aware here that the
camera only catches a certain amount of space on my little uh, portable art board. Now the human head right over here is kind of like what we did here with this uh, sphere. Sphere. My mouth is just not wanting to. My lips are getting lazy on me. So, with the light source in the same place as the sphere, I want to then do my rendering very, very similar to the way that I made that sphere look like uh, not like a circle. Oh, I'm sorry, how we took the circle and we then cast the shadow with the rendering and we made it look less like a circle and more like a three-dimensional sphere. So that's the same approach that I'm doing to that roundness there. The light is hitting right here. And that negative space is the concave that very similar to the inside of that pec muscle. As you can see, it is slowly starting to come along. You're starting to see more and more uh, definition, more shape. Um, it, the drawing is looking less and less flat um, and it's starting to uh, look more interesting. So the head is starting to come along and it's much more appealing to look at. And this part of the head is um, like a sphere. The um, pencil that I prefer to, to uh, or the lid that I like to draw within my pencil. When I have a really fine point I can do all these different little, my feathering looks different. Um, but this isn't for to make, you know, extremely detailed work and things like that. This is to show how my, my concern is to, to make sure that, you know, the, um, the, the, I am actually focusing on giving you the, the right information that you can use for your illustrations when you render them. And rendering is really, you know, finishing your, your illustration that's at the, at the end of the work. Um, meaning the work is really when you're building up the image. It's so really, your focus really should be on the underdrawing, making sure the anatomy, proportion, things like that are correct. Because then there's no point in rendering that illustration if it, um, doesn't have a good foundation, then it's just going to be a weak build um, and it can crumble much, much easier, it can collapse. So, this character here in this face, we're just, he's got a kind of a flat top mohawk here, or full hawk. I want to show that this part of it is flat. And the reason I created a thicker line here and then a thicker line here and the rest are just kind of thinner is just to kind of show that the, the wall kind of goes like this in his hair. It, it kind of has different levels in there. And a lot of that is just, after a while, it will all start to happen without really putting a lot of 
I mean, it just automatically happens. Your subconscious, you know, your your mind's eye is already, you know, become stronger. And then you um, pass that information down to your hand and it just becomes automatic. And that's like uh, learning to ride a bike or, um, you know, anything that you do with repetition uh, becomes easier over time. So the more drawings that you start to render, you'll find that your rendering starts to strengthen, starts to grow. But you want to make sure you have a good understanding of, of rendering and how each line works. And, uh, and that is by light source and shapes so that you understand uh, the shape that you have on a page that you want to emphasize the the way that shape curves or angles all right so on here let me see if I can I can I'm not so used to drawing so high up on my table um, making sure the drawing has that it's underneath the camera so I've, I've gone ahead and I've um, play some shadows on the opposite side of my light source and if you remember the light source is over on the right and the shadow where the areas that are not exposed to the light have that solid black So I, I like to kind of think of this little part right here as almost a flat piece of the cheekbone. I uh, gave this guy a really sharp and high cheekbone. Not every person has that. So you want to vary your characters when you're drawing. You don't want to give every single character such angular cheekbones if you're interested in how to draw a human head um, there are a lot of videos online um, that are available in a lot of books but if you like I, I can make a video on the rules um, and how I make faces and uh, how I draw human uh, heads and how to make them attractive, what the rules are. And then his lip underneath will always cast a shadow if the light is above it because that lip folds over the top of the chin. And... Uh, Everyone has that, so. And these are just short little lines that start to curve over like that, kind of like what we did back on uh, the ellipse shape, just to, and that lip curves just like that over the, over the chin. So I'm gonna go underneath his jaw start to add my shadows some of the neat things you can do and uh, I'm sure that since you are already familiar with fundamentals um, if you're watching this video you, you most likely uh, just looking to finish your drawings, but um, when you do a lot of shading like that, you rotate your pencil, and it it helps keep your lid um, sharp. 
because you're basically shading, uh, shaving each side by rotating. So you don't have to use your sharpener so often. Just little tricks like that. So this is the um, part of the neck that, that goes up and behind each ear on the end of the jaw, you have two on each side. You don't have to shade that all the way up and make it a, a solid line all the way. Um, you want to break that line and just use the, the shading, the negative um, shading. And that actually, um, the human eye will then connect it and finish it. And they, 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 your mind knows where it goes. So your, your reader, your viewer, um, their brain puts that all together. And that go, goes back to people who don't draw. They'll identify that something is wrong with the illustration, but then they won't know the technical and know what it is. It's because we, we look at human faces and human people every day. Unless you uh, unfortunately have agoraphobia or even then, I'm sure you'd still see faces. I mean, television, internet. And because that little, um, I don't want to say it's a muscle, but this little uh, part of your neck that goes up, it's, it's kind of cylinder. And I just want to help that shape by putting those bleeds there. All right, so he's wearing, uh, maybe he's wearing a, just a shirt here. And let's say because his head hangs over that um, it will cast a shadow. And that's going to be the next, the next uh, thing that we're going to draw is we're going to draw, we're going to render fab fabric. And uh, the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say fabric. <laughs> fabric. Um, that was, uh, my brain was working too fast there and I'm trying to say two different things at one time. So the fabric, um, and show how to shade and render that. It's, it's all the same rule. Um, it's, it's all shapes. And that's how... Uh, Everything in your illustration works under this follows the, the same rules. The light source is over here. On this end over here is more shadow. Let's say that his shirt on this end is casting shadow on top. And uh, the way that you decide um, to shade inside the fabric is depending on the way you, you drew folds. Now, I like to go in and just do a bunch of little kind of swirls and little little marks and just go lightly through there and just kind of um, loosely go through and even loosely hold my pencil. I generally hold my pencil um, near the mid area or higher up when I'm doing the loose drawing just to, to kind of keep it loose and the pencil kind of does that little wiggly effect. But I, I don't have it that, exactly that loose, but just to give you an idea, it's, it's pretty loose and I'm just, and I, I shade in, I draw in these I, like, I drew a line on that side, a line there, and I, then I come back in and I decide, okay, I'm going to just shade in the negative area, the, the shadow part on that. And that's 
what all all that is is just that inside that concave I just shade inside of there where the fold comes up and would touch the light it um, is white there I don't shade that part and then to help the curves I just put those little bleeds going in the direction of the fold to keep with the shape of the fold and these bleeds don't need to be very long because the the little fold only goes up so high it doesn't really go up extremely far so um, those lines stay short generally if, if it fold is uh, or the curve is much larger then your lines go larger depending on how long it is I, I generally will shade up to half or a quarter of the way so that just varies on how big and how long the curve or fold is lifted um, and how wide so and generally when I'm actually rendering um, I move through just a little slower than this but because I don't want to make the video extremely long I'm moving just a little faster slightly faster it generally happens about the, the same pace now when, when I'm drawing um, my human figure I like to give them eyeballs because to me that's really important is the look um, either they're looking at the camera or they're um, looking down I mean just the, the, the eyeballs and how you how you draw them that's really important and I think the human eye by giving them the eye just creates life into this character Okay, he's got some eyeballs. Now around the ends of his mouth. He has. Now that's just the basic. Um, you don't want to over render. That's just showing some light shadows um, cast over um, onto. Let's just say his jaw because his cheekbones are so defined and he's got a pretty strong muscle right there in his jaw and that's what I shaded was underneath that muscle to show that it's beveled it's raised up now this isn't really a video on texture but let's just kind of do these little dots up top and that's to be to show just like we did here how there are multiple layers and levels of the uh, the hair. It's not just really flat in the front. So we did some thicker lines there, and then the rest are kind of thinner. Um, and that's like the same rule like I did here, where um, I just kind of want to show it's beveled, like shaded. I did that on this side away from there. So that would be where some of these hairs are just a little longer, and they're um, out of the light. So we just do a, a couple of um, little dots here and there. They don't really have to be too many, you know, just a few, you know, just to kind of establish that his hair is, um, and then I angle these line, the line here on his, on his mohawk. I didn't make it exactly, um, straight. I kind of made them angular so that way we establish that his hair has multi-levels 
to it. And that's the rendering for the head. And then just kind of was looking at this while I was drawing that. Um, and I want to say that elbow comes down lower. It, it should be. Because uh, that joint right there would be the bone, elbow joint, and the forearm. All right. So now we we started just a little bit. Uh, I mentioned a little bit on, on the folds um, that were um, for fabric. And then uh, I'd like to go ahead and show how I render some fabric and folds because it is um, always multi-layered uh, it's it's always has curves and and um, sometimes it'll have sharper folds and it's it's you know not flat and it goes back to the the rule that we did here just multi um, layers and um, generally when I draw I have a sheet of paper that's underneath my palm so that I don't smear it and I hate to start smearing that right there but um, I don't have a piece of paper out right now so so when I do the fabric here um, you, you have to first thing you have to do before you start rendering is to figure out yep you've guessed it your light source so I'm going to say the light source is, you know, going with these drawings here, the light source is going to be behind him. And we're kind of hiding his face um, into, away from the light. This guy's mysterious. He's going to be wearing a, um, kind of like a... Uh, a sheet maybe around him kind of disguising himself kind of like uh, uh, I want to say I, not a serape but um, or maybe maybe it is maybe it's more of like because it uh, I'm not sure if they have a, a hood on them but let's just say he's trying to disguise himself and he's got this extra piece of cloth and it's um, and it is uh, disguising it, making it difficult to identify who this character, who he is. So I'm basically um, right here, going to kind of follow the shapes that his head is. His cheekbone is kind of like got a flat on one side um, because his head is inside of this cloth that the fabric um, is covering up shadows. And so I want to kind of help the some of those curves and, and uh, shapes, but in the all in the same time. Okay, so fabric here is multi um, levels and folds, and so I'm going to shade in the negative areas, the um, the, the the canyons, um, the are. Maybe I should call them craters, kind of shade in where the fabric um, folds inward. And the more uh, shading that you put, the more uh, thicker the line is, then the deeper there is in that um, that it, it bends in there because it, it's causing ca casting more shadow in there okay 
So right here is our light. So those lines, the lines there will be thinner. And there, there, I don't go all the way up on the folds with the um, completely in black shadow because I want to allow room for bleeds so that I can show it gradually goes from, it goes from a solid black gradually into a lighter, um, less shadow. So I'm allowing space for my bleeds so that I leave room for the transition. And I'm continuing to shade in the crevices, the area where the fold um, dips in. And that's where the light doesn't reach. Kind of like those crevices on the moon. You get to see the darker shadow area where the light, where the sun doesn't hit, the light doesn't reach into those uh, crevices. So I have drawn a bunch of these um, lines that I did really lightly with with my pencil um, loose, as I mentioned earlier. And I drew a bunch of different little shapes. And then as I'm going through and rendering, I am then deciding on whether or not to use those lines. but. The lines that I've placed. Um, I may adjust them just a little bit, but I'm, I actually like the lines that I put down. And as I was constructing this, this illustration, so I'm really not ch changing uh, what I had originally put there. It's staying pretty close to it. Some I have to adjust just a little bit to create the white space in between just a, a little further. And that's just a habit. I, I do that because I know the drawing is going to be reduced 67%. And uh, if you put your lines too close together, that white will disappear uh, when it's reduced. Um, and you don't want to put your, even your, your bleeds, you don't want them to be too uh, close together because then they they, they start to run together, they become a bit muddy. So we're creating this shadow, which is helping the mood kind of showing that this guy is kind of uh, maybe conspicuous here. He's just, he wants to be disguised. Or maybe that sun is really bright. Maybe this guy's in Texas. Maybe he's like, hey man, it's, it is hot in this state. I've been told um, especially when I'm like online and making these videos, um, things like that, 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 uh, I don't have a Texas accent that, uh, I guess I, I don't sound the way that someone imagines someone from here from Texas to sound like. I guess, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's okay, I guess. <laughs> I, I 
may not sound Texan, but uh, if you listen closely, I'm sure you can hear the the words that we combine here in, in Texas and the way that we speak. I do have some Texan uh, tone, some Texas slang. Do you, do you have that? So let's see if you can start to see um, this figure. And I'm trying to debate on whether to go all the way over here by his mouth and underneath his nose. Just to finish off that shape just a little more. Just to make him a little more mysterious, he's in a little more shadow. And I am shading in the areas where there's no light. And uh, <laughs> I'm aware I've mentioned that a few times, but I, I, I'd like to, maybe it's being a parent uh, for so long that uh, you start repeating yourself. And then, you know, you joke about your parents getting old and seeing now and they're starting to repeat themselves. <laughs> Well, you made them that way. So uh, I uh, find that if I repeat something, it, it, it'll absorb better. Um, it'll, that the person I'm telling it to retains the information. <laughs> so. so yeah, if you're, you're thinking, hey man, my, my parents are pretty weird, man. They're, they're pretty crazy. Well, they, they weren't weird before you were born. It was raising you, having to repeat everything, getting after you. And as a parent, you say things you never imagined that uh, you would say. So if you think your parents are strange, well, you made them that way. It's years and years of raising you. <laughs> or at least maybe my parents. Maybe it was just my case because uh, raising an artist, I'm sure, is not an easy task for parents. So maybe I was a bit lucky that uh, it's actually my granddaughter that is interested in the drawing, uh, interested in drawing. <laughs> I didn't have to go through that with, with my kids. My my kids, uh, they, uh, they, my first one, he was, he was so great and wonderful. It's like, hey man, we should just, we should make a lot more. They're so easy. Then my daughter came along and uh-oh. <laughs> When she was little, uh-oh, she was born crying and didn't stop until she was five years old. She she was uh, she was a bit more vocal uh, right away. I guess she takes after her dad, huh? I'm pretty vocal. And uh, I talk a lot. And so is my daughter. But she's extremely intelligent. I guess uh, I just kind of... I just talk, you know, at least for her when <laughs> what comes out of her mouth is, is worth, you know, uh, hearing because uh, it's, it's from an intelligent mind. Mine's a bit more creative, I guess, and it's just, it's a bit weird at times. The things that I, I'll say, I guess. But, uh, but then my daughter got older and oh, she's, she's so amazing. She's, uh. I wouldn't trade her in for the world, man. So now, uh, I mentioned earlier, um, I'm sorry, I was sketching a little bit off camera there because the camera's so high up on my drafting table or my drawing board that uh, I gotta lean over so much. Um, and I, I may have mentioned before that, um, that uh, there are uh, multi levels and folds and that um, curves and that there are some sharp um, bends to the uh, fabric here and that's what this is down here this is where the fabric isn't uh, making smaller bends and folds is making larger 
um, it's making uh, a long a larger bend um, and that's right there you, you can pretty much just leave the illustration there if you wanted to um, just be able to show the shading um, for that and if uh, hopefully you can tell that this is his right uh, left shoulder this would be his right shoulder his back and his head's kind of down kind of hunched over because uh, when you're trying to disguise yourself you you aren't standing uh, upright you aren't looking up you're generally trying to look down not making eye contact um, eyes are, are pretty important there and I guess people uh, when they, they see your eyes I guess they they, they know right away it's you. So now I'm going to put some bleeds. And the bleeds are the exact same uh, exact same rule. that To go in the direction of the, uh, of the fold. So we're going to start doing uh, these bleeds that way. And I tried sharpening my pencil a little bit. But this HB is just... I don't know why it fights me. So when I use a hard lid, I can really... Get some nice crisp lines but you know you don't unless your your illustration is going to stay pencil and then if you know if not you don't have to really worry about that because an inker will will uh, clean up the the lines or at least they should it's uh inking is is finishing the artwork along with uh, translating it Translating the uh, the pencils from gray to black and white, but uh, they should generally um, clean up. And organize some of the some of the, ble the bleeds there. They're a bit messy. You can use these bleeds to show um, gray, and this is, I didn't make this solid black, I made this right here uh, with just the line work, just to kind of show that it, there, there's a concave, and that the um, concave uh, is still within a pretty good area of the light, so it's not falling in complete shadow. And mentioned earlier, depending on how long your curve is, that's going to determine how long your bleeds are. Um, and just to kind of show there's still some shadow and it starts to kind of get broken up here because the light is starting to come in. So um, I'll reach there in that area. So I just went ahead and um, broke those lines there. And that's style preference. You know, you don't necessarily have to because you have a colorist. And then same thing here where I didn't want to make it solid black, but yet I, I still wanted to to show. And the concave goes that way. So we can use this right here. To kind of show the, the wavy concave. This is coming out, this is on top of that one. So like we did here, this is on top, that was below. So right there in between where it's, it's coming out, there, there is a um, bit of gray. And then it's going to be established with bleeds by showing a thicker base. And that's going to create a darker beginning. And then a quick transition out where the line is feathered. And that's going to uh, help show that there is an object over another object and it creates a, a, a tight, a short um, shadow. And then 
right here, let's say this is um, sort of a wave to it because we'll, we'll make it raised there too. So we've got some lines going out to help the shape. And there are a lot of really good colorists out there and a lot of these guys will um, um, help the shapes and, and work with it in color. But I don't want to rely so much on another artist to complete my illustration. I like to try to finish it all up and make my work stand on its own. Um, and try to complete the drawing as much as I can, you know, with, without um, over rendering, because I, I do understand it, it is going to be colored. Um, it will be inked. So I don't have to spend all this time doing unnecessary work, but I, I want to be able to at least um, provide a, a, an illustration that that could stand on its own, but um, doesn't leave a whole lot of room for guessing. Um, I, you know, but uh, I want to leave some creative freedom in there for um, colorists to be able to work. And I'm not going to shade everything because um, those lines I thought were too long, so I want to make sure that white right here on the end where the light would hit. And that's the cool thing about this little eraser. It allows me to kind of go in there and create a, a little line of, uh, create that little space of um, white. So I want to make sure that was sharp enough. And just trying to look to see where the, um, the shape is and so it, it in here it it still has the shape right there where I started making that it kind of starts to become less shape right here but it starts up here and it starts coming through so I'm going to continue my little bleeds here to kind of show that this is rolls up and uh, there are some little pieces that roll inward, so those are in shadow. All right, so this is pretty much coming along here. Um, and uh, these, a lot of this is just, um, a lot of this is, is pretty much just sort of a, a basic style of rendering, and it's, it's, it's really effective because you uh, you don't want to really uh, add too much line work and then things start to blend in together we're just trying to create depth here and this um, when I say this is pretty the uh, basic, um, it I mean it's not exactly that basic, but um, it, it's just you know what I'm trying to say is that I you know this is this the the information that I'm I'm trying to provide you that you can you can take some of it um, and see what works for you and and uh, you know you make it your own you can adapt this to any style the um, the rules of, of the, the way light works and shape, um, you can you can adapt that to any style, you know, with uh, cross hatching or, or you can do a stippling art or, or but it's but the rules are, are um, basically they're they're always the uh, it's the same rules and uh, and then you can put that into your own, your work. I'm looking around, I, I pick my head up a lot from the um, art table. Um, 
because I uh, like to gain a new perspective on the illustration um, that I'm working on just so that uh, I look at it uh, from a you know different angle. There, there are tricks. Some people will uh, put a mirror next to their illustration and to see their illustration in reverse and um, just to make sure everything balances out when you can flip the artwork no matter what uh, position um, you flip it horizontally within in, in, in the mirrored image within the mirror and to make sure that it works on both sides okay so this is uh, comic book rendering and uh, this is my approach uh, again my name is Jimmy Reyes I want to thank you for spending the uh, time here with me uh, I know your time is valuable and I really appreciate you taking the time to view this video if you would also take the time to go ahead and rate the video feel free to share um, and if you want to be able to see my portfolio with my rendering the images that you saw at the beginning of this video those images are also on my DeviantArt page in my DeviantArt page if you look here on the bottom left of your screen it is Jimmy Reyes dot deviantart.com I'm also on Twitter uh, I do post updates when there's new videos I, I will post it on Twitter but if you subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, you'll get all the updates when I put up a new video and uh, my Twitter name is at Jimmy Reyes art and my YouTube channel in case you're watching this on my uh, social media my YouTube channel is at YouTube and it is Jimmy the Art God. Um, and that is my uh, name there on, uh, on YouTube. And again, thank you so much for taking the time. Remember to keep your pencil sharp and uh, keep drawing. I, I didn't just wake up one day and was able to render like this. It just, it took practice and practice and practice and trust me even though you don't really even though you don't know me but uh, you're gonna get better everyone improves you know uh, the more time you you spend on something the better and better you are gonna get at it all right well thank you so much I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next video